hello everyone uh, warm welcome to you all let's start this uh, event so let me introduce myself i am ashwin bharat the chapter leader for code academy uh, ju chapter and i'm a web developer uh, i also write blog posts uh, you can find me on medium hacker known and dev websites i'm a final year uh, graduate student from jain university bangalore pursuing software engineering so without further ado let's start this event so i welcome you all once again now before we start let's get to know each other through a small activity okay so i'll give you a few minutes so use this time and uh, introduce yourself in this format okay uh, who are you what's your name your interest and your skills okay so drop it in your chat section uh let's get to know each other first okay So let's see. Yeah. Anyone interested to introduce yourself? You can either use your mic or your chat. Okay. Hello, Rohan. Okay, you are from the same college. Good to see you. Others. Come on, guys. Let's have a introductory, interactive event. Okay. Hello, Shaha Hussain. Okay. You want to be a full stack in, uh, developer? That's really good. You know HTML and CSS. Very nice. Nice. So JavaScript will help you add more interactivity in the website. Right. So you are at the right place. Hello, Arshit. Come on, guys. Let's have uh, an interactive session. I've seen only few of you introduce yourselves. Come on, uh, be bold and start introducing. Yes. Hello, Janotel. If I'm uh, pronouncing it right, you are from Bangladesh and uh, you are from Information Science and Engineering branch. Okay, that's good. We have a lot of computer students here, right? A lot of engineers. That's good. Others, guys, come on. We have at least around 20 members with us, right? Right now. And it's counting on. Let's see. Let's see others' introductions. Okay, hello, Suhani. <laughs> One is from IoT brands. Okay, you want to become a software developer? That's good. That's good. Keep it coming, guys. That's good. I can see a lot of them joining the event. Come on, let's uh, have a good introduction within ourselves. You can use either use your chat section or your mic. To introduce yourself, okay, okay, okay. There's a mechanical engineering student. That's good. I'm happy to see students from all departments right now. Okay, hi, hello, Nikhil. Okay, you are from Jain University as well. That's good. Okay, trusted in your development. Good. You can see a lot of lot of you who are interested towards. Either software development or web development. Okay. Hello, Dilip. You are also from CSC branch. Good. Good.
okay so let's move on keep uh, introducing ourselves as well okay okay hello Girish okay we have a cloud developer over here hello IOTG I'm spelling it right so Jaya Sharma um, sorry if I pronounced it by me. wrong okay hello Aditi okay we have from students from C CS departments that's good that's good okay interested in your development software engineer cool all right so just a second Okay guys, so let's move on. Uh, before we start this event, I would like to have a few announcements from the chapter itself. Okay, so we have a So we have our new core team members uh, who have joined this chapter. So I welcome you uh, Ujita, Nitish Patel and uh, Girish uh, to the chapter so come on guys so introduce yourself uh, using the mic so that others can know about you Pujita so yeah. yeah hi Ashwin hello guys hi. Uh, so hope everyone are interested in this event hope it will go well I am Pujita Mantina I am from uh, fourth year Jain University I am in uh, CSE from cloud computing and mobile application branch. So I'll be the core team member of this uh, uh, core academy. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Pujita. I'm uh, happy to have you as part of the team now. So, Nitish, are you there? Uh, yes, bro. Hello, everyone. Okay, so I'm Nitish Patel from Nepal. I'm currently pursuing my computer science and engineering with this issue with spec in IOT at Jain University. So, proudly, thank you for the opportunity, Ashwin Bro. So, I'll be leading as a core team member at Code Academy uh, and under Jain University chapter. So, it will be exciting, I hope. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nitesh. Happy to have you as part of the team. Uh, we also have Jiri uh, Girish uh, from Robotics Department. So introduce yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks for the suggestion, Ashwin Bhaiya. Yeah. I'm Girish from uh, Jain University, pursuing uh, robotics and automation in third year. I love coding as a part, and I develop projects based on AI and ML. And recently. One of my papers got published in ResearchGate based on a particular chatbot. And I would love uh, working for this code chapter to the fullest and uh, possible as I could. Thank you, Girish. That's, uh, you have really achieved a lot of, you know, uh, milestones uh, as a student right now. So I would also encourage uh, each, uh, every one of you to know uh, try to publish some papers like uh, Girish as well so it will uh, help boost your resume actually 
yeah so moving forward uh, there's another announcement we also have a new discord channel uh, discord community for our uh, you know uh, chapter so uh, as we already have a, a whatsapp community uh, students have uh, you know reported that they want to have a one on one interaction with the uh, core members and chapter leader right so uh, in whatsapp this would become a mess so what i did is we have um, created a new community in, on discord where you can directly contact me or the core team members and uh, you know chat with each other as well get to know about uh, the entire uh, chapter members itself right so i'll be uh, dropping the links soon in the chat box okay so everyone please join in this community as well so only at this place i'll be active enough to you know interact with each other and uh, help you even solve doubts in te uh, technical you know uh, doubts or even clarifications from uh, even javascript or whatever the technologies that i'm good in right so moving on so let's uh, start this event okay so i welcome you all once again to be a part of this javascript the basics event so today we'll be uh, uh, taking a road map in javascript okay so we'll be discussing about wh what is javascript in general and we'll be also solving few basic uh, javascript code okay you can even code along so when i intimate about this uh, coding part i will give you a break so that you can so Get javascript code it is, is the language of so right so let's start basically whenever we use uh, google chrome or firefox or internet explorer or whatever browser that we use in any device we are accessing a lot of websites right so these websites are uh, all coded using javascript right so javascript including coffee script and microsoft's typescript is by far the most popular language with around uh, 12 million developers using it worldwide right so internet is a really big network uh, that we have around the world right so whatever that we access uh, through our google chrome or our any browsers uh, we use the uh, we use the websites because of javascript right so each and every website is uh, connected with each other with the help of javascript javascript uh, you know kind of gives you the interactivity with the websites right so we will be discussing what and all we can do with the help of javascript so the first thing that uh, comes into picture is user interfaces so whenever uh, you have written uh, code using html or css what happens is you you will end up with a static website right so you will have a static website which does not do a lot so what html does is it gives you a structure to the website and css will give you the styling to the website right so although if you go on and see the websites that you really like you know which are which are very interactive in the internet so they use a lot of javascript to make the users use it more free free and uh, easy right so any uh, famous products that you use on the web uh, let it be facebook or my uh, microsoft's uh, you know office uh, web products or google they all use what we call as uh, front end frameworks or libraries okay so using these libraries what you can do is you can build user interfaces so when i say user interfaces it's what you see right in front of your screen right so as you are uh, attending this event you are seeing uh, the google meets user interface right so that's what we got so whatever you can see visually we call that as an user interface right so as you can see the, the popular uh, uh, front end frameworks and libraries are uh, react js vue js and angular so angular is built by google guys so google what they have done so they have built a framework so that we can 
uh, write minimal amount of code and bring a really good user interfaces. So, and we also have Vue.js, which is also really popular. Uh, he is, uh, is developed by a, you know, a developer who has worked in the fan companies, you know, and, and, and product based companies. So, and we also have React.js. So right now, uh, what happened is Angular had a shift from uh, one code base to another. So in the meantime, React took took up and went on to become a really popular uh, uh, library, we can uh, say. And right now it is most popularly used fr framework. So React, we will be uh, calling React as library instead of framework because uh, is lightweight okay so you can look on the differences later uh, after this event so react uh, react is also built by facebook guys so uh, what facebook team has done they have uh, they have uh, made this library open source so that we can uh, developers like us can use this to build a really good user interfaces so javascript the first thing that uh, comes into the picture when we think about javascript are user interfaces so these are the three popular frameworks or libraries that is used worldwide okay so moving on you can also build uh, rest rest apis and servers using javascript so i'll explain to you uh, each each term one by one so starting with uh, what is a rest api so rest api uh, full form is representational state transfer for rest and uh, api is a application programming interface so what this means is whenever you you know you have a website let's say you log into your facebook account right so whatever you see visually right in front of you that's a user interface although whenever you access your profile or uh, whenever you see, you see posts or the number of likes all are saved in a database on the servers right so server is nothing but a computer okay it's a complex and a, you know fast computers uh, which is online 24 by 7 okay so uh, in simple terms server is actually a computer which has a sophisticated software okay so what happened is what happens is server will be very uh, fast as well as it will use a complex software so that it is very responsive to the users so whenever we go into the face facebook uh, website it is very fast right we can use it whenever we want uh, at whatever time we want it will be equally responsive right if you log in at 7 am or 7 pm the website will be up and running without any uh, effects right so that will be taken care of the servers okay so other than javascript have you, uh, any of you uh, used any programming languages guys any other programming languages that you are aware of let's see you can use your mic or chat to you know show this you can be yeah c c plus plus java ruby yes yeah we have used uh, C, C, right? C++, Java. So uh, what we do is, yeah, Python. So these languages are popular because they are also used to build backend servers, okay? So we have Java, we have uh, Ruby, right? So why we use this widely? Because uh, previously back in those days, we only used JavaScript on the, on the front end, okay? So moving on, what happened is, uh, Ryan Dahl, who is the creator of Node.js, what he did was he used the V8 engine of Google Chrome. So Google Chrome has a engine. So it's like a, it's like how we have for Java. If we need to run any code on a you know a browser, we need something on the back uh, behind the screens, right? So that's what a, a V8 engine is. It will take take care of the code that we write and transform it into the uh, machine readable form so that the users can see the user interfaces okay so what uh, the creator of uh, node.js what he did was he took the v8 engine and used it for server so that's why 
now we can write javascript on the servers as well okay so not just at the front end now we can also use javascript at the back end and node.js is a popular runtime we can say it is a runtime it's not a framework it's a runtime on top of which we can write uh, server code okay moving on if you have any doubts you can uh, unmute yourselves guys or you can use, use the chat okay so we can also build a mobile application okay so it is possible with the help of react native so again react native uh, is a library which is pub uh, published and open source by facebook so uh, if you have noticed the you know user interface of facebook uh, apps compared to other apps it's very responsive right so that's because of this uh, sorry just a second okay so whenever you have used facebook apps right on mobile it's very responsive right so uh, you can write uh, those similar responsive uh, apps using javascript itself using the uh, library called react native okay so it is also uh, built with uh, java uh, javascript with the help of react library and facebook has uh, made it open source so that we can also use it to build mobile applications okay so moving on we can also build a desktop applications using javascript guys so there's a library called electron so any uh, any new products that you have used for example discord or slack community so uh, or even uh, whatsapp you have a whatsapp uh, desktop application right so all of these uh, applications are now built with the help of uh, electron uh, js libraries only so just with javascript what you can do is you can convert your uh, you know web application products or mobile applications into a desktop application with a few changes using this library okay so moving on uh, we can also build you know uh, iot products and uh, you know robotics projects uh, using javascript itself right so uh, if you might have heard about uh, arduino or raspberry pi right uh, anybody have uh, worked with that before arduino raspberry pi okay okay it's okay so uh, what we have in an arduino or uh, raspberry pi is we have a small hardware uh, platform okay uh, based on which you can build uh, you can build small projects so that you can uh, connect the sensors with the computers okay you can collect data using uh, some sensors like you have a light detecting sensor we also have you know uh, we also have uh, bluetooth sensor we also have wi-fi models so you can connect your hardware kit to the computer and collect data from it okay so you can uh, visit this website to know more as well so using javascript you can also build uh, iot pro uh, projects okay so javascript is everywhere guys so when you learn this uh, language you can not only use it for front end web development you can also use it for backend you can also use it for mobile application development you can also use it for your know, desktop iot and many many more okay so javascript is omnipresent you can uh, use it uh, in each and every platform right now okay so before we move on uh, do you have any doubts anybody okay okay cool so moving on so now let's discuss a lit uh, little bit uh, about the history of javascript okay so so what happened is uh, previously we had uh, a browser called mosaic okay so it, it was built uh, by 
company called Netscape. So what they did was they created this website and it was uh, it made the internet very popular back in those back in 1990s. So internet was uh, the booming technology, right? It was uh, slowly adapted by everyone. So what Netscape did was they created their first uh, web browser and based on which other companies as also started building this similar uh, software products like web browsers okay so after that what happened was javascript was introduced by javascript was introduced by netscape okay uh, through their uh, browser and it really went popular okay so what happened after that is each and every company used started to write their own version of the javascript we had a uh, Google Chrome, Opera, Safari, Internet Explorer and all these uh, browsers what they did was they created their own version of JavaScript. So that's when we had something called browser wars. Okay, So let's just say uh, when we write JavaScript in one browser, it was not uh, working on other, another browser. So they had some other type of code over there. So to uh, have a solution to this uh, issues, what we have what we uh, came up with was ECMAScript, okay? So ECMAScript is not another language at all. It's just the uh, standard for JavaScript, okay? ECMAScript is a standard uh, in JavaScript, which is uh, which is followed by each and everyone who are using these browsers, okay? So whatever code you, you write in, a, uh, in your uh, project, right? Uh, whenever you use in this uh, browsers, if your code follows ECMAScript standards, it will work on all of the browsers, okay? So that's why uh, ECMAScript came into the picture, okay? So that's a really interesting documentary, guys, in, on Discovery uh, Channel. You can check it out later about browser wars. So moving on, any doubts till now? Anyone about the history? Okay. Okay. So let's start our uh, coding session. Okay. So let's take a break for 10 minutes, guys. So after 10 minutes, uh, you come up with your uh, code editors. You can be Visual Studio Code or Sublime Text, or you can use a website called Repl. Okay. So I'll be using a Repl online editor. I'll uh, just a second. Okay. So this is a REPL website guys, okay, you can sign in with your uh, Google account and you can create a new rep, uh, project over here, okay, uh, while selecting the language you can choose HTML, uh, CSS, JS, okay, so to create a, fr a small uh, front end project you can use this and you can give your name. Okay, and you create your ripple. It is a simple process. Okay, uh, so I'll give you 10 minutes time. So based on that, you you will get after creating, you will get uh, three files: index.html, style.css, and script.js. So let us meet after 10 minutes. Okay, it's uh, 6:35 now. Let's meet around 6:45. Okay. I hope you uh, guys are ready to have a code along session okay ashwin bhai yeah, one doubt one small doubt okay go on can will we be able to i mean uh, get this file on github yeah sure after this event uh, i'll be sharing the important links after the regarding this code files presentations okay? yeah 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 bhai yeah, one more doubt bhai like we we'll, we should uh, import this file directly to github or we have to like do some process to from this platform to github in order to no need transfer you, those files no need you can just uh, log in with your google account or github account okay 
and create a project okay after that i'll be uh, showing you the code so that you can follow along okay is this clear yeah yeah bro yeah okay cool so today we'll be discussing about uh, variables uh, data types control flow operators and functions these are the basics of javascript or you can say any other pro programming language if you cover these topics you will be good to go okay so moving on variables are you know uh, named as location in the storage okay so in javascript we use variables to store uh, data uh, and store it uh, store it in a location okay so we'll be uh, not only storing but also accessing the data using variables okay so uh, in javascript we have uh, uh, this syntax as follows where we will be using var var stands for variable v a r followed by the variable name you can give uh, any variable valid variable names so we cannot use uh, you know predefined uh, reserve keywords like we have uh, for the programming language uh, there are some words which have meaning to it right other than that you can you uh, name the variable names and a value we can assign a value to it okay so as you can see over here here's an example so this is a variable name called event name and i, I have declared the variable over here and i have assigned the value a string as a, a javascript roadmap as a string to the event name variable okay so i'll be uh, sharing this code file so is it visible guys can you see the screen okay cool so as you can see uh, we'll be using javascript uh, in depth only so this is the basic html code uh, to connect our css file and uh, our javascript file okay so you just need to copy this two lines of in the in your code okay the other starter files will be starter code will be given in the repl project only for those who want to copy, I'll give you some time. Okay. So, for newcomers who, are, who don't know HTML, I'll explain to you a little bit. Okay. So, in HTML, we have uh, this doc type HTML tag, right? So, these are called tags. So, whatever we uh, close uh, within this Angular brackets are called tags. We have a doc type HTML to denote that we are using the latest version of HTML. Okay. So, this is the HTML tag. Uh, we'll be adding all of our all of our tags inside this oh, one tag html okay so this is an opening tag this is a closing tag and we also have uh, two main tags called head and body so uh, most of our uh, html uh, tags will be inside this body only so inside this head what we will be adding is the uh, first thing is the title of the uh, you know uh, website okay so as you can see over here any uh, uh, you know website that you open and th in that tab there there will be some words right so those words will be uh, displayed because of this title tag okay and uh, we'll be linking our uh, style sheets where we'll be writing this style uh, using this link tag and any other metadata so whenever you share your link uh, in the you know social media there will be some metadata right something as a small summary a small summary and a image if uh, the link is valid so those kind of information goes under the, go under this head tag okay we will be using meta tags for that and followed by that we will be having body tag where we have uh, declared the heading of the website okay so as you can see over here this is the output of the uh, you know uh, website so as you can see we have uh, that's javascript roadmap the basics as the heading right so i've given this as the h1 h1 stands for for the first heading we'll be having six types of uh, heading uh, header tags so among them h1 will give you the uh, biggest font size okay and followed by that i've uh, included the script tag so as you can see there's a script.js file so more we'll be coding most of our uh, javascript in the script tag only Script, sorry, a script JS file only. 
so no need of uh, knowing about html as of now but i just wanted to give you a quick introduction okay okay so moving on uh, the topics for today is uh, variables data types control flow operators and functions okay so as you can see over here before we start uh, you'll be wondering what is this green you know uh, lines right so this is a comment okay so when you use two forward slashes it's a single line comment as you can see the color will change if we add this two forward slashes so for uh, if you want to add some documentation right so as you can see uh, to explain in more detail i have given you certain number of lines right so this is what we call as documentation so give, so to give some good documentation in your code we will be using commands okay so as you can see this is a single line command this this all these three lines are single line commands we also have multi line commands okay as you can see the multi line commands start with uh, forward slash and star and ends with star and slash okay so after this i have added this uh, whatever you add in inside this two uh, you know commands uh, two slashes and star this will be a multi line command so whatever you write in here so javascript uh, engine what it will do it will neglect this code okay it will not run this code it is just for the uh, for the sake of documentation so only developers will be able to see this right okay so moving on so we have this uh, vari uh, variable called event name over here okay so this is a simple uh, variable that we have over here and i have assigned it a uh, assigned it a uh, value javascript roadmap okay i have given this event name as javascript roadmap right so we can uh, either uh, declare the variable like this on a separate line and assign a value like this in a separate line or what you can do you can directly declare it like this okay both are uh, both are viable both are correct okay you can de uh, both declare as well as assign in the same line also it will work okay and moving on we have a something called console.log okay so console.log is used for uh, used by developers so that they can output errors in the code okay mostly we will be using this console.log for uh, you know for it is for the reference for developers only okay so if any of you have uh, worked with android you might have uh, noticed the console uh, window at the bottom right in the code editors so whatever we uh, use inside this console.log will be displayed over the console over here okay so we'll be using console.log to output the value that we have for now okay cool so moving on so you'll be wondering uh, if we have uh, noticed other languages like uh, java or c++ or c we'll be using uh, some data types right something called as int and float so here we won't be using any of that because javascript is a loosely typed language okay what i mean by loosely typed language uh, it means you don't have to specify the uh, type of data you are going to use okay you are going to store in the variable so as you can see i am storing a string data type right so whatever is en enclosed within uh, two uh, double quotes or single quotes it is a string right so in uh, in javascript what uh, what happens is we don't need to specify the type of uh, data that you are uh, using that is the data type right so it it is a loosely typed language uh, you as you can uh, remember some of you might have some knowledge in python as well right so even in python you won't be uh, using any type to specify the variable uh, type right so you'll be directly using uh, declaring this uh, variables inside the language okay so that's why we uh, we say javascript is a loosely typed language okay so we have covered variables for now so moving on we'll be uh, discussing about data types okay so till now do you have uh, any doubts guys anyone did you understand what are variables and how we declare variables in javascript
okay okay cool so moving on uh, we'll be discussing about data types okay so data types are uh, nothing but the type of data you are going to store okay so as you can there are numbers there are uh, strings right so in javascript we have uh, six basic data types which are number boolean string object undefined and null okay we'll be discussing uh, one by one later okay so the, the main uh, data types we'll be using are number boolean and string okay so undefined and null or something uh, we'll be encountering later so i'll be dis uh, discussing about this later okay so the uh, first sorry so the first uh, data type that will be that we will be discussing is uh, data uh, number okay so as you can see i have created a variable called usn so most of the college students will be having a usn right is a university register number where will be it will be unique for each and every student in college right so uh, in javascript we have uh, something called number right so any data type that you are using so to to know about uh, which data type you are going to use we can use a property called type of okay so as you can see uh, the reserved keywords like var standing for variable or type of these will be uh, shown as different colors in editors right so as you can see type of will be used for knowing about the type of data that we are going to store in the variable okay so as you can see i have declared a variable usn and assigned it a value 31 so 31 is a number right so if i run this code if you have noticed this console right so as you can see it is a number so the usn that we have uh, displayed uh, that we have declared is a type number right so we can use this type of uh, property to know what type of data you are going to store okay so next we'll be discuss, uh, discussing about boolean okay so in boolean boolean is nothing but either true or false okay boolean is used to uh, check whether uh, you know a statement is true or false okay so as you can see uh, i have uh, declared a variable called chicken and uh, in that check-in i have declared it as true as you have you guys have uh, you know checked in in this uh, event so if uh, there's a code to denote this we'll be having a uh, variable as check-in and we'll be assigning it as true okay so as you can see if i uh, output the type of check-in we'll be getting boolean okay so if you can see the console as you can see it is boolean right so that is the another uh, data type that we have in javascript so moving on we have already seen the uh, string data type right as you can see this the first output in the console is uh, from the first console dot log uh, statement right so if i comment this out for uh, just for now and uh, uh, try to output the type of event name the variable that we have declared to assign a string we'll be getting the output as string okay so i'll be commenting uh, the other code so that we will be having only one output okay just to have a uh, just to not have any confusion okay so as you can see uh, the event name is of type string so you can use this type of operator whenever you uh, you want to you know uh, get to know which type is declared declare or assigned to the variables that we are using over here okay so we are saying number boolean and string so we will be now saying what is an object also okay so in javascript an object is a is a data type which is also a data structure okay in an object what you can do is you can store uh, what we call as properties okay so as you can see if i hover over the mouse uh, we we have, we have something a message called property right and 
I have given two properties to the object that I declare over here obj1 object1 okay and I have uh, declared it in a such a way that using I am using here the curly braces right so if you want to declare any object you will be uh, opening a curly brace and closing the curly brace and within that we will be giving the properties okay so as you can see the syntax the rules is uh, we have to use the property name just like a variable name you can use a property name followed by a colon and followed by that we will be having a value okay so as you can see i have given a property called greeting and followed by that i have given the value hello okay and i have also given closing notes as another property and a value called by right so as you can see when i try to uh, display the object in the console if you watch it very closely uh, this is how an object is stored in the storage okay we have a property and we have a, we have a value we have a property and a value right so we'll be separating each property using this comma over here okay so in short this is how we declare an object and assign values using property followed by value okay so uh, what uh, to access each and every property let's say you want to only access the greeting greeting property from object one okay so what you can do is you can use uh, something called uh, dot operator okay so this dot what will what it will do when i use this uh, obj1 dot greeting you can access the value of the greeting property okay so if i uh, run this code in the console you can see we have hello right instead of uh, uh, output, uh, printing the entire object it will just print the value of greeting property right so similarly as you can see when i uh, try to output the value of closing notes we have by over here right so this is how we access the properties of an object okay so even if you check the type of the object using a type of property uh, over here if i try to output this code you will get the output is object right so as you can see we have type object okay so we have uh, seen what is number boolean string and object right so there are two other uh, data types in javascript that you will be encountering a lot when you are building websites uh, one is undefined and another one is null okay so, so whenever you uh, create a uh, variable okay let's say i create a variable now and uh, named event 2 okay and i just declare it okay and if i try to print this using the console.log can anyone guess what will be the output anyone from the audience if i try to only output the event to value when i have not assigned anything right so what do you think will be the output of the code anyone have any idea okay Nikhil says it's undefined. Ujwal also says it's undefined. Okay. Kirish says it's null. Okay. We have both the answers now. Okay. Shall we check it out? So what we will get is undefined. Okay. So what does that mean means? Whenever you declare a variable, what you are doing is you are de uh, declaring, right? This is the declaration part. After that, uh, as you can see above, let me show the first code as you can see I, in here i have declared the variable but also i have assigned the value over here right so when you assign a value over here you are what what you are doing is you are defining defining the variable value okay that's why we use the term define or undefined okay so when you don't give any value to it what happens is the javascript uh, language it will uh, store you know it will uh, account this as an undefined a data type okay did you guys get it did you understand so whenever you don't uh, give any value whenever you don't assign any value 
or define any value it will uh, take the variable event to as undefined okay okay so moving on so null as uh, uh, will be seen whenever you you know try to uh, whenever you don't want to assign any value you just want to de uh, declare it as you know uh, nothing null means nothing okay we can use uh, null in those times or whenever you use the uh, javascript code right in the future if you write any uh, websites using javascript you will be uh, seeing uh, this uh, null uh, data type a lot okay so that's uh, that's about the basic javascript and data types guys okay so moving on we will be discussing about the next topic control flow okay so till now we have discussed about uh, variables and data types right so do you, do you have any doubts till now anyone shall we move on okay okay cool good okay so we'll be now seeing operators okay uh, okay we'll be seeing uh, what is operators now just a second so what are operators anyone have any idea anyone who have learned other programming languages might have noticed about uh, this term right what are operators okay i'm gonna take logical assignment exactly so yes yes all our operators you are right aditi so in general operators are symbols that we use to perform any arithmetic operations or assignment operations or compare comparing values okay uh, till now we have actually used a uh, operator right now can anyone tell me what operator we used till now when we are discussing about variables or and uh, data types we used an oper operator okay type of yes uh, the, uh, uh, yes type of, equal to right we used uh, equal to to assign a value to a variable right so that is an assignment operator okay so if you want to uh, perform any arithmetic operations like addition or subtraction or you know multiplication division so whatever type of arithmetic operation or comparison if uh, one element is lesser than or equal to if it is e both are equal or both are not equal so in these cases we'll be using operators okay so we have a lot of operators in most of the languages okay similarly we also have operators for uh this may operate as for javascript okay so we'll be discussing uh, uh from arithmetic operators okay so as you can see we have a uh, five basic arithmetic operators one is plus minus for plus for addition minus for subtraction star for multiplication we use we actually uh you know uh, say this as asterisk okay so it is not a star it is an asterisk okay so whenever uh, anyone asks you this should be your answer okay it should be it shouldn't be a star it should be asterisk okay we also have a forward slash for a division and percentage for modulus okay modulus means uh, so whenever you you know divide two numbers we will be having a reminder right at the uh, bottom so whenever we uh, whenever you want to obtain that reminder we'll be using this percentage operator okay okay so let's start uh, you know using this operators one by one okay so uh, assume that we have two variables a and b okay in a we have stored 100 and b we have stored 20 okay so when we try to add this uh, when we want to add this uh, both numbers using this variables a and b we'll be using plus right 
So can anyone uh, guess what will be the output of A plus B? Come on guys. What will be the output of A plus B right now? Come on, let's make it interactive, everyone. Yes, the 120, right? So let's check it. Whether you are right or not, you are. Yes. So when we add to uh, two numbers, 110, 20, sorry, we'll be getting as 120, right? So let's say we want to subtract these uh, two numbers. What will be the output now? Exactly. So the output will be AP, right? So let's say we want to multiply these two numbers. What will be the output now? Come on guys, let's make it a very interactive. As you can see, I, have, I see a lot of answers in the chat. Come on, everyone. A multiplied with B. What will be the answer? Yes, that's a big number, right? We'll be getting uh, 2000. Yeah, yeah. So what if we want to divide both of these numbers? We'll be using a forward slash, right? What will be the output now? 100 divided by 20. Exactly. Five. Right. So when we divide, we'll be getting five. So what will be the reminder? When we uh, when I said uh, remind, we'll be using reminder for percentage symbol for reminder, right? To obtain the reminder. When we uh, what will be the reminder for uh, 120? Okay. Okay. It is zero, right? So when we try to divide 100 with 20. Uh, it will divide it by 5, so we will be opting a 0 as the reminder, right? So let's check it, and it's 0, right? So what if I try to divide 20 by 100? Let's say I want to divide B by A. So what will be the reminder when I uh, divide B, 20, that is B, B divided by A. So sorry, B modulus A. Can anyone guess what is the output when we... Uh, divide 20 uh, sorry when we try to use the modulus operation for uh, 20 and 100 anyone okay let's see the output it is actually 20 okay you know why yeah reminder you are right at B. So, when we try to uh, get the reminder of B and A, instead of A uh, modulus B, when we put B modulus A, what happens is it will look like 200 uh, divided by 100, right? When you divide 20, sorry, when you divide 20 by 100, you will be getting the reminder as uh, 20, right, in the first operation. So, that's what you will obtain using this uh, modulus symbol, right? When you divide it, you just a second. Let's say when you divide B by A, you are getting 0 0.2, right? Although, when you try to get the reminder and the first operation, what you will be getting is 20. Okay, it's not 0 0.2, it's 20. Okay, cool. So, these are the five basic uh, operators that we have in uh, you know JavaScript for arithmetic operations okay so we also have uh, increment and decrement operators okay so increment and decrement uh, what it will do it will increase a value by one or decrease a value by one okay so we'll be using uh, two plus or two minuses to denote increment and decrement operation okay so let's see let's say we have this uh, variable b is there right so if I try B plus plus, can anyone tell me what will be the output of B plus plus? Okay. Let's say I run, run this code. It is 20. Right? It's not 21, it's 20. Can, I, can anyone explain why? 
we saw you we saw three of you were answering as 21 right but it's 20 yes exactly it is post increment so we have this uh, two types of increment uh, increment operations itself okay when you try to increase the value of b like this so what will happen is it will uh, output the value as 20 but increment the value as 21 okay this because uh, we are using this plus plus after the variable name okay so if i try this the opposite way if i try plus plus b see what will happen it will be 21 right now it will be 21 because the first operation it does is it will increment after that it will uh, give it to the console.log uh, function right although when you try to do b plus plus what it will do after the increment uh, incrementation if you check the value of b at the first console.log it will give you 20 but after that the value is actually increased in the storage okay so as you can see uh, this is a post increment okay if you use it uh, let's say like this this is a pre-increment operator okay pre-incrementation operator say operation okay and this is post right okay so let's say we want to decrement this uh, b value okay if i comment it out let's say okay and let's take a for now okay let's take a and if i try to uh, you know post decrement the uh, value what will be the output guys hundred at it is it's hundred this hundred let's say so hundred it is right so it this is also what we call post decrement operator operation right so if we try to pre decrement that is when we use it before the variable name we'll be actually getting 99 right yes so so it is very important when you use uh, use this incrementation or decrementation operator if you use it before the variable it will first do the task of incrementing one value after that it will uh, you know output it okay so whenever you try to use this uh, part of the code what instantly what it will do it will increase the value by one whereas when you use b plus plus it will uh, give you the actual value first after that only it will increment in the storage okay so moving on let's have a quick exercise for you all to you know clear any confusions if it is there let's say we have uh, two values x equal to 5 okay and uh, y equal to 10 okay let's say i want to increment the value of x first after that i want to add the value of y like this okay So let's say we have this expression okay so can anyone of you guess what is the output of this code take your time okay let's say what is the output of this particular expression let's see let's see how many of you get the correct answer okay use the chat section okay what is the output of the uh, expression that is included in the console.log over here okay we have three answers guys come on let's make it interactive do we have any other answers we have three different answers now okay 
Okay. Cool. Okay. Shall we run it? So as you can see, answer is 12. Okay. So I'll explain it to you by uh, you know how this works. Uh, we have x a first initial value of x as 5, right? So when we try to post increment, what it will happen? It will give the value 5 first. After that only, it will increase the value in the uh, storage. Okay. So I will uh, denote that incrementation part over here near the x value. Okay. So now x is 6, but it gave us the value 5. Okay. After this, as you can see, this is a pre-decrement operator for uh, y, right? So now what will happen? It will give the value of 9 and also kind of uh, update in the storage as well, right? Now the value of x is 6 and y is 9, right? So moving on, when we again pre-increment the value of x, now x is 6, right? So what will happen when we pre-increment the value of 6, we will get 7, right? And when we try to uh, subtract this whole uh, number by pre uh, post decrementing y. So we have 9 over here right now. The value of y is 9, right? So what it will give? It will give us 9, but it will decrement it uh, in the storage later, right? So as you can see, we have 5 plus 9, we have 14, 14 plus 7, 21. So 21 minus 9, the value is 12. Right? Did you guys understand? Yes. So, these kind of exercises you will actually get in uh, most of the programming languages, you know, if you have any tests in this, this one. So, output based questions will be there. So, this is how it works, guys. Okay. Pre increment and post increment. Okay. So, moving on. We also have, uh, you know, comparison operators like assign. Uh, first, we have assignment operator. We used it right till now. Uh, whenever we do are declaring the variables, we'll be using this equal to right. So this, this one equal to uh, is used for assigning the values to the uh, variables. Okay. So that is assignment operator. We also have comparison operators. Okay. So whenever you compare two values, it can be string, it can be boolean, it can be you know, uh, number. So whenever you compare to uh, uh, use compare uh, comparison operators, we need, we need two two values. Okay, we need uh, one value on the left side, one value on the right side. Okay. So always the output of this comparison opera operations will al always be a boolean value. Okay, it will be either a true or a false. Okay. Let's say we uh, we take one uh, example. Okay. Just a second. Let's say uh, you let's say we have comparison operators. Okay. Let's say we want to compare whether five is greater than two or not. So uh, whenever we compare, uh, whenever we use comparison operators like this, less than symbol or greater than, or uh, you know uh, less than or equal to or greater than or equal to equal to equal to not equal to we will be using two values okay one on the left side one on the right side okay so this is called as operands and uh, this is an operator this is an operator and these are operands okay so as you can see five and two are called sorry five and two are called operands guys okay these are operands and the The symbol uh, that we use angular uh, left angular bracket that is an operator over here okay so can anyone tell me what is the output of 5 greater than 2 whether 5 is greater than 2 or not yes it will be true right because 5 is actually greater than 2 so whenever we use comparison operators the output will always be a boolean value as you can see over here okay so if we try to check whether 5 is less than or equal less than 2 the output will be false right we can see we can say whether 5 is equal to equal to or 2 we check that we can say it is false right 5 is not equal to 2 if we try to check whether 5 is itself equal to equal to 5 then we get 2 right 
so let's change it back let's say if we want to check 5 is not equal to 2 then we'll get true only right so this is how we use comparison operators okay so moving on we have uh, three other uh, operators okay which is and or and not so we'll be discussing more about this when we use when we'll be using this uh, control flow statements okay so moving on let's uh, check out control flow so till now anyone have any doubts we have covered uh, variables data types and operators right did you guys understand this till now okay cool so uh, in control flow we have uh, two concepts one is conditionals and another is loops okay so in conditionals what we'll do we'll have a, a certain number of conditions and we'll check whether it is true or false okay based on that we'll be uh, you know executing to a few uh, statements you can say it statements or a, a code a small part of code okay so we'll be using conditionals for that okay and loops will be using loops for you know uh, doing repetitive tasks okay let's say for example you know you are in uh, facebook okay let's say let's take facebook so whenever you visit facebook your feed will be keep on uh, updating right so it will be keep on uh, coming up with new uh, posts and no no notifications right so in some repetitive task like that what we'll be using is we'll be using loops okay and uh, in javascript we have three basic loops called for while and do while okay so this uh, this control flow uh, you know or whatever the concepts that we discussed it is actually transferable to other languages as well okay the syntax or the uh, rules in which we have to write this can vary although the concept is same okay so let's say you have a uh, use java javascript python any language any programming language the concepts apply the same over there as well okay so moving on let's start with the conditional statements okay so okay so let's say uh, you know we have a variable called chicken okay uh, you you have you are all attending this event right let's say uh, google meet google has created this website and what they have did whenever a user joins this uh, website they will change this variable uh, value as true okay so i've used this uh, variable check in and assigned it as true okay so as you can see we have two conditional called if and else okay so what will happen is whenever we uh, give a condition inside this if statement okay so as, as, as you can see i'm using this uh, brackets inside which i'm giving the condition in this uh, condition uh, you should give a give an expression you can give a value or an expression which will always give you a boolean value okay only then you can use it over here okay so as you can see i'm use, uh, storing a boolean value inside this uh, check in variable right so what will happen is whenever the check in will give you the true value true value as output it will uh, execute this uh, code inside this if statement okay if it is false it will say it will execute the else statement okay that's why we have this as if else okay it is easy right it is like using a english uh, level high level uh, code right so whatever you we see in this uh, programming languages they'll be using high level uh, keywords like if else where so it will be denoting like uh, english related uh, concepts only okay so let's say i will give this uh, check in as false okay can anyone tell me what will be the output uh, will it uh, give the first output or second output yes it will give the second output right so let's say i uh, print this uh, this one it says please register before joining the event right so whenever uh, the if condition does not apply 
it will uh, execute the else conditions whatever you are given over here okay let's say i give it back to true so now what will happen obviously it will uh, execute this code only okay so when uh, it executes the if condition uh, if st uh, statements it will not uh, execute these conditions it will sk just skip it okay it will just skip it and move on to the rest of the code okay so this is how uh, a basic if else statement will work we can also extend this uh, if else ladder that we call using uh, else and again if you can do like this and you can keep on uh, you know adding more conditions also okay so this is how an uh, if else conditions work okay so when when you want to let, let's say you want to uh, you know have uh, 100 or 200 uh, kind of conditions you want to check so in those cases it is very difficult to write if else again and again right it will be kind of kind of monotonous right so in those uh, condition uh, statement uh, types what we can do we can use something called a switch statement okay so as you can see just as okay So you can see we have something called a uh, switch conditional statement okay so in switch what happens is it will take a condition just like an if statement it will take a condition and inside this switch we will be having something called cases okay so this case what it will do it will check whether the condition is equal to this given case or not okay let's say i have a, a variable condition and i given it a value a right so uh, based on that we can give multiple cases okay let's say you want to have another case to check whether given condition is a, a vowel or not okay so what we can do we can check uh, using like this okay let's say you want to check whether it is e particularly e or not and we want to output as console.log it's a vowel okay so what will happen uh, when we run this code is it will uh, output as vowel okay because what i want is it is checking the uh, condition and uh, corresponding to the case values okay so whatever cases that we given it will run the each of these cases okay and this break statement whenever we, uh, we have checked this condition right we don't want to check another conditions also right if this condition is true it will come inside this uh, uh, set of code and it will run it right and we want to uh, cut it and get out of the conditions right that's why we use break statement okay so break is uh, also called as jump statements in programming languages okay so this is a jump statement okay it will just jump out of this code and it will not uh, you know run the other codes so just to denote you know just a second let's say i give these uh, values vowel a and vowel e okay let's say we change this uh, value to e okay so what will uh, javascript do it will check only which case is equal right and it will uh, directly print the uh, corresponding values and it will uh, break out of the switch conditions okay so this is how a basic switch statement will work okay and let's say you you have a condition called uh, z let's say we have given the letter z over here and we don't uh, have any other uh, case cases to check in those cases what we can do we can give a default something called default uh, condition so that uh, you know just to intimate the user with that just a second okay, so just to implement that this is a let's say a wrong letter this try again so whenever uh, any type of cases or you know if you use default we have to use a break statement otherwise what would happen if i comment this out just for your clarifications okay what will happen it will execute each and every uh, condition okay so you can see Just a second, guys. Uh,
So So when you don't give this break statement, some, sometimes when you have a multiple you know, case conditions, it will execute each and every one of them. Okay, so just to avoid that, we'll be using break conditions. Okay, okay now. So let's say, uh, you know, as you can see, this is also over, this is also over. Let's say you have multiple cases, which you want to print out the same output. Okay, in those cases, what we can do is, you know, let's say I have a value called AE i. Let's say I have value i. Okay. And I want to just print out the uh, vowels as separate and other letters as consonant. Okay. So in those cases, what we can do, we can simply, uh, you know, instead of uh, writing this again and again, we can have cases on top of each other like this. Okay. We can say, uh, yeah, I owe you. Let's say we have want to check the vowels only. Okay. When you check only the vowels and we want the uh, same output for each and every one of them okay in those cases what we can do we can club all of this together and we will have just one output okay so if i run this code what will if you can see this case is checked and the value is printed see so if i change it to let's say we want to check a if you check a it will be a vowel if you check u also you will get the same output okay so this is how we can use uh, switch cases, you know, yeah, effectively. Okay, if you want to have the same output for multiple values. Okay, let's say you want to try B. Till then, what will do? It will give the default. It will go to the default condition and it will print consonant. Okay, so this is the basic uh, idea of a switch conditional statement. Okay. So moving on, we have uh, loops, right? We have uh, we have a cover. If we have covered else, and we have covered what is switch also, right? Okay, so. Moving on, we have loops also as part of control flow. Okay, so in loops, we'll be seeing three basic loops in JavaScript. One is the for loop, the while loop, and do, do while loop. Okay, so we'll start with the for loop. So let's say you want to, you know, print the values from 0 to 5. Okay, let's say you want to print, uh, want, uh, let's say you want to print the first five. I know natural numbers okay so in those cases what you can do you can have a for loop okay this is how a for loop works okay we have a initialization initialization okay so the first part will be to initialize a variable okay so this is the first part of the for loop okay For loop, so just a second. The first part of the code, as you can see, there are, this part is divided into three code, three parts. Okay, so first one is initialization. Okay, we are uh, initializing initializing a, a variable a. Okay, and we are giving it a value one. Okay, so the next part is the condition. Okay. So for each each time the loop runs, let's say it is this is a loop which will run for five times. So for every time we have to have some condition, right? To say whether we we have uh, you know, we we only want to run this many amount of time. So that's why we have a condition over here. Okay. So in this code, as you can see, we are checking whether the value is less than or equal to five. Okay. And the final you know uh, part of the for loop is the updation value you can say it is the updation okay so we just we don't want to keep on doing for infinite amount of number of time right we want to uh, end this loop as well so for that what we are doing we are incrementing the value using the increment operator right as we have discussed uh, all of this 
we are putting together the comparison operator increment operators and variables co concepts and using the uh, for loop okay so if i run the score what will happen we will get the first five natural numbers one two three four five right so this is how a for loop works okay so to, it will uh, keep uh, it will keep on running this console dot, uh, log statement for five times as per the condition okay and it will uh, increase the value like this okay let's say you want to uh, just uh, output the uh, odd values okay in those conditions what you can do is instead of uh, incrementing the value by one you can update it using a statement like this okay let's say you can you can say a is equal to a plus 2 okay in those cases what it will do it will just print the odd values 1 3 5 like it will jump the it will just skip the process like the value of a is incremented by 2 times plus 2 right we are increasing the value by 2 right so this is how we can uh, you know change the updation values like this okay let's say you uh, give a you know minus 2 by mistake okay so what will happen whenever you give a wrong updation value like this or you give a long uh, condition this loop will uh, run for infinite amount of time okay so if i try this in ripple it will output a lot of values to and stop at a particular point okay it will just as you can see it is hanging for a moment Say if I stop this. See the page got unresponsive only. So as you can see, we have to give the right you know, updation value or condition so that the loop does not run for infinite amount of times. Okay. Cool. Okay. So after this, we also have. Uh, okay. So. This we also have a uh, while loop and do while loops, okay? So, while and do while are almost the same, you know, concepts. So, I'll explain both of them uh, clearly, okay? So, just a second. So, till now, uh, does anyone have any doubts, guys? Any doubts? The concepts are clear, right? Okay, cool. So, let me you know, take some uh, refresh it as uh, becoming unresponsive for a minute. Okay, come back. Mm. So, uh, next for the next loop, we also have while loops, right? So let's say we have a variable count is equal to five. Okay, let's say you want to uh, do a repetitive task by printing, uh, you know, first five numbers in uh, first five natural numbers in reverse order. Okay, in those conditions, uh, what we are doing here is we are using a while loop. Okay. Uh, a while loop actually works just similar to if if condition where where you can as you can see we have a condition over here and then it will run till the condition is true right so as you can see i have given the count uh, variable the value 5 and i am checking whether count is not equal to 0 right so 5 is not equal to 0 right so it will uh, run this set of code okay so as you can see, I'm uh, logging the output and I'm decrementing the value by five, right? So the while loop will keep on, uh, you know, running the same steps again and again, statements again and again, until the condition becomes false, right? In that case, it will just jump out of this place, okay? So can anyone tell me what will be the output of this code? As you can see, 
anyone in, do you want to any you know guess anything the output of the code right here we may have a count uh, value as 5 right and we are uh, printing it and decrementing the value so what will be the output each time this loop runs it will be uh, you know uh, 5 4 3 2 1 right it will be uh, 5 by num uh, natural numbers in reverse order right as you can see we have the output as 5 4 3 2 1 right so this is how a while loop works and uh, we also have do while loop as you can see so do while loop is not very different from uh, you know while loop just uh, these two are differentiable with uh, you know one condition the thing is the while loops are called as entry control loops okay the while loops are called as entry control loops which means that if you want to run any code in while loop what it is doing it is checking the condition at first and then only allowing you to run the code right so that's why it is it is checking at the entry only so it is entry control loop okay whereas as you can see the do while loop the do while loop is a exit control loop okay so what happened in uh, do while is uh, will be uh, doing this value okay just like a uh, do it will do this uh, statements it will execute the statements and then only it will check whether the count is not equal to zero okay so as you can see it is a exit control loop only at the end of the first iteration it will check the you know uh, whether it is count the count is not equal to zero as you can see it will give the same output okay let's say uh, i give the value as zero itself okay let's say the value of uh, count is zero can you know tell me the output of this code given the count as zero will the uh, code inside this uh, do i loop run or not yes or no will the code run or not anyone have any idea guys okay so as you can see when i run this code will actually print the value as zero and then only it will check the condition okay so it will run at least once this do while loop will at run at least once compared to while loop it will run only it will, it will not run only okay, just a second so the only difference between uh, while and do while loops is the while loop will uh, run the statements only if the condition satisfies Whereas in do while loop, it will uh, run the code once and then it will check whether the condition satisfies or not. Okay, so that's how it will work. Okay, so okay, so that's about the uh, conditionals. Okay, so moving on, we'll be discussing. Let's discuss about functions. Let's see, uh, you know, three basic functions that we have in Java. Okay, so functions are nothing but the uh, block of code designed to perform a particular task okay so let's say we want to you know just print a hello or let's say you want to build a complex code and you want to enclose it into a single place in those cases what we will do we will declare a function and we will in uh, when you when you something called invoke invoke the function okay so when we call the function what will happen uh, something called in invocation happens in the screen okay so in javascript uh, we can declare a function using the function uh, keyword okay so i'll be sharing this uh, repl code okay just a second so as you can see this is a simple function uh, where i have given the function uh, keyword and followed by that function name and this is something called arguments okay so what will happen is in a function you can either accept any values so that you can use it and uh, print output or you know do some calculation okay so to uh, pass some values to this function we'll be using this arguments okay and uh, 
inside this function i have this console.log statement okay so what will happen is whenever i call this function using the function like this okay so this is a function this part is function definition and this part is the function call okay so as you can see this is a function call okay this is a function call this is the function definition okay so this is how we declare a function in simple function in javascript okay okay so as you can see uh, when i try to call this function what happens is it will uh, you know yeah so as you can see uh, this is the function definition and this is the function call okay so whenever you try to pass any values like this it will uh, it will be stored inside this uh, name variable as arguments okay so uh, let's say we want to use this function again to you know say hello to some of our uh, you know audience over here let's say there's rahul right let's say i want to say hello to rahul so what i can do i can uh, just call this function again so that it will uh, you know use the same code again right so instead of writing this uh, console.log again and again and again you can directly what you can do you can use a function and call it multiple times okay so let's say We have another person called Aditi. Okay. So as you can see, if I try to, you know, call this function again and again, we get three different out outputs, just with the function call, right? So as you can see, the functions are very powerful, guys. Okay. Whenever you want to, you know, repeat the same amount of code again and again, inside a named part of the, uh, you know, project, what we can do, we can declare a function and use it again and again. Okay. So whenever you try to, you know, let's say you have a complex web application that you are building and you want to, uh, you know, decrease the line of lines of code. In those cases, you'll be using functions a lot so that you can, uh, you know, follow a principle called try. Do not repeat yourself. So in those cases, what you can do, you don't need to repeat the same code again and again. Instead of that, you can put it inside a function and call it. That's it. Right. So this is how a basic function works. Okay. And now what we'll do, we'll see three basic, uh, you know, uh, JavaScript functions that are present in the language itself. Okay. We'll be using three uh, different uh, functions called alert, prompt and confirm. So we have a, you know, a basic uh, project over here. I have uh, created, a, you know, a simple button over here. As you can see, I have, I have created two headings and a button where it says try it right so when i click this function uh, button what, it, what will happen a pop up pop box will open okay so as you can see this i am on alert box so as you can see this is a, this is what will happen when you uh, use an alert function okay so whenever whatever you pass inside this alert function yes. string or number so this will be displayed in the pop up box as you can see i am on alert box so let's say i change it to javascript so what will happen is this uh just a second i'll just run the code first so after running the code if you see the uh, value has changed to javascript right so this is how an alert function was simple uh javascript function okay so now uh, let's see what is a prompt function okay In this prompt function i've created uh, what i did i've created a simple function okay and i have uh, declared two variables text and person okay uh, you can use a let as to declare variables also in javascript okay let is like a new feature in javascript which is also used to declare variables okay similar to var var okay so even if i use uh, var over here the uh, code will actually work there will be no changes no problem so if i run this code what will happen is uh, the button will be ready over here 
so when i press this button it will ask for the name okay as you can see uh, the prompt function it will ask for name and i'm giving and, and the default value is given as harry potter okay as you can see the second uh, value that i'm passing into the function it is harry potter say let's say uh, you just want, if you give just harry what by default the value will be defined over here okay so prompt will be used to get a user input uh, from from us okay if you want to get a user input as you can see uh, harry is displayed over here, redefined over here if i say let's say i uh, you know use my name ashwin and i give okay so based on that what i have given at i have given conditional statements so that it will take the value input value as uh, you know inside this value uh, variable person and it is checking whether it is null or not as as we discussed the data type null as you can see it, are, uh, it is checking whether uh, the value is present or not okay so this is an or operator it will check the uh, person is null or if the person doesn't uh, you know the user if we don't give any let's say i give the try try it again and i don't give any value just i give okay so as you can see the text is now a change to user cancel the prompt okay so that's why it is displayed over here like this otherwise I, what if i give any value let's say the i i will give the default value as harry right let's say i give okay to harry itself so it will be saying hello harry how are you today because i'm changing the text over here and i'm using a dom event okay this is called a dom event actually so if you have uh, learned more about uh, you know html we have used this uh, doc type in, on top of the html code right so this doc type is denotes nothing but the document so the entire screen over here as you can see in the browser that's a document so what we are doing we are accessing the document in that we are getting the element by id as you can see i given the id for the paragraph tag over here as demo right so i am accessing that element and i am giving the uh, inner html uh, you know uh, you know part as text so basically what i am doing is i am taking this text and i am putting inside this html code after i am uh, you know running this uh, javascript file okay so after that what will happen here the text file will be added okay let's say if i am if i am changing this to uh, h3 tag okay let's say it is a heading tag if i run it okay if i run it if you, you will see the difference okay if i, if I say, let's say i give it as a delete okay let's say one of the audiences here okay as you can see this change it is a heading tag so whatever we are you know getting the element by id uh, whatever the demo uh, whatever the element is using the demo id it is giving the text over here as the hello delip how are you today so based on the input it is dynamic right if i give you give directly harry it is giving harry right so this is how useful a prompt function is okay so this is used to uh, get da uh, data input from the user okay and finally we all have something called confirm function okay so in confirm function what what will happen if i show the script tag it's very similar to uh, prompt only so in this uh, what will happen is if i if we have have two options right okay or cancel in the uh, pop-up uh, box right so if we press uh, okay what will happen is the confirm function will return a boolean value as true as you can see it is uh, sh telling you that we have to press a button right if we press okay uh, as you can see it is the confirm function is returning true only then this if function will work right only then sorry this if conditional will work right so that's how this text is now uh, you know showing us you press okay so let's, let's say run it and i said say this time i press cancel as you can see you press cancel so based on the uh, output whatever the user uh, you know clicks the confirm function will uh, return the value as true or false if it is false we can declare this you know uh, use this text to uh, you know similar to the prompt function whatever we use the dom event as you can see over here we are changing the html over here and putting the uh, text inside this paragraph tag okay so these are the three basic you know functions in uh, javascript okay so i'll give the 
code files uh, to to you guys after this event okay so that's all about uh, you know today's this one we have discussed the basic functions right we have discussed uh, five topics uh, variables data types control flow and functions and operators right so that's it about the basic basics of javascript guys so we have uh, come to the end so we have few announcements for you okay so we have a javascript channel in our uh, discord uh, community okay so uh, please check out this uh, uh, discord community uh, do uh, join this and ask any uh, of your doubts or post any of your you know what you understand about this event in the javascript channel over the discord community okay so i have provided the links over here i will give the links after the event as well okay so so i'll give you a challenge okay so this is a javascript challenge provided by hacker rank in that whatever we have learned till now you can actually solve problems using the concepts that you have learned okay this will help you more to understand you know the concepts and all and it will uh, increase your problem solving abilities okay so i'll give you a challenge okay so uh, in hacker rank what you can do there's a uh, set of tutorials and challenges called 10 days of js okay so after uh, you you've completed the challenge you can get, get a gold badge over here as you can see you can use this as your you know uh, boost your profile and uh, share it in your uh, linkedin or uh, you know twitter or any of your social profiles to showcase your uh, javascript skills okay so this is a challenge i provide to you guys i'll give you this link at the end of the event as well so do check it out okay and please uh, support our uh, you know code academy ju chapter by joining this uh, you know website okay as you can see we have our uh, own event landing page at uh, community.codeacademy.com in that please join this uh, you know uh, chapter page where you will be getting the you know all of the event details as you can see and our core team members also okay so do check it out and uh, that's a wrap up so thank you for participating and i hope you had fun you know getting to know about the javascript basics the roadmap and you know so thank you guys